I'm Lisa from Radnor Memorial Library, bringing you a family wellness tip for the week. Today we're going to be talking about healthy sleep habits. When we're talking about healthy sleep for our families, the first thing we need to remember is that as the caregiver in the family, the caregiver has to be the role model for healthy sleep. And this is not this is not easy. We're in very strange times right now. And being a sleep role model that shouldn't be another thing on your to-do list. In other words, if you're not getting your normal sleep or healthy sleep, don't be too hard on yourself. From the research that I was doing over these last couple of weeks about healthy sleep, one thing that I will say is that if you have any serious concerns about your sleep, the first thing you should do is you should speak to your health care provider. Your health care provider would definitely be able to give you some solid advice on how to improve your personal sleep situation. The second thing I would say is that one way we can improve our sleep sometimes is by talking to a friend. If you're having trouble getting good sleep at night because something is on your mind, reach out to somebody and, and talk to them. So anybody in your life that you can lean on um, who knows how to help you feel better, that's a good place to start when you're thinking about how to have healthy sleep habits. The, the third important thing for adults with, uh, with getting good sleep is to monitor how much news you're taking in and when you're watching the news. Uh, sometimes if we're watching the news and it is in the evening close to bedtime, it's going to be more likely to interfere with our ability to settle down. So those three elements of speaking to a healthcare provider, turning to a friend, and monitoring your news, those are things you can do for yourself. The other things about getting healthy sleep in our households are habits that apply for the, for the family as a whole. So if you're doing them for yourself, and watching to see that others in your care are doing these things, the whole household is going to, is going to benefit. So the, the first one would be to get outside and uh, get some exercise in your day, if at all possible. So some, you can sometimes do those two things together. You can get out for a walk around the block. Um, you might just get outside for a, a really short stroll, and you might want to fit in additional time for, for exercise. After exercise, and pre ideally that exercise outdoors, the next thing to consider with um, helping us to get good sleep is eating the right amount of food at the right time. So sometimes, uh, sometimes if you have your dinner earlier in the evening, then by the time you're getting ready to go to sleep, your body might want to have another small little something um, to, to help with the sleep. Maybe it's... Um, and one of the classic examples that the, the physicians are given, giving in the writing on sleep is a piece of toast with peanut butter. So you have something that's, uh, that's a protein and carbohydrate together to fill you up and help you settle down. The, the classic warm glass of milk before bed is another one that just a little something to put in your stomach. So, but not eating too heavy a meal um, right before sleep either. If your family needs to eat dinner together late in the evening, that's what's going to work for your family, and that's not something you necessarily have to change. Every family's routine is going to be different, but that is one thing that sometimes can affect our sleeping. Uh, another crucial item is to try the best you can to power down electronics. Either an hour before bed would be ideal, but at least 30 minutes before going to sleep. Everyone should be away from their electronic devices. And that can help, um, help you to settle your mind uh, toward a sleepfulness. Having a consistent routine in the evening. And again, for every family, this is going to look different. But having something that happens every night that signals it's uh, now we're coming into time to go to sleep. So for younger children, the classic is to say, you know, you have your bath time and then a story time, and then going to sleep. But children, uh, older children, including teenagers, and also adults, um, the medical advice is that having some type of consistent routine can help our, our mind and body know it's time for us to settle into sleep. 
And then the last piece is to think about the space that you're sleeping in. So ideally, the room should be dark. It should be calm and quiet. And every person is different. In some homes, a person likes to have music on to sleep or some kind of white noise. Other people like it perfectly quiet. Some people like a night light. Some like, some like it very dark. You know what's best for your family. But having something of a peaceful and calm a bedtime space uh, is going to help with that sleep routine as well. So the main, the main pieces to take away today would be having that consistent routine, including exercise and meals at times that work well for your home and for your body. Uh, having somebody that you can turn to, whether it's a physician or a friend, if something is on your mind preventing you from sleeping. Having that outdoor time, including your exercise as well and taking care that you monitor your news consumption. Those are the main things that you can do to help you and your family to have uh, a more peaceful and healthy sleep time. Thank you for your time today. And if you have any questions about the resources I consulted um, for this little video, please feel free to reach out or stop by the desk the next time you're in the library. Have a good day.